let's get started. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining our Rookout Masterclass today. We're very happy to have you here with us. We hope that it gives you some practical tools on how to maximize Rookout to the best of your abilities. Um, and also just note that today's deck and session will be uploaded to our website later on. So you can watch it again later, bring a friend to watch it, whatever you want. Um, and at the end, we'll also have a Q&A, so please feel free to drop any questions that you want, and we will get to them at the end. So, Josh, let's get started. All right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so my name is Josh Hendrick. I am a senior solution engineer with Rookout, and I'm based out of the Los Angeles area. Um, also with us is Oded Karet, who's a Rookout product manager, who will be uh, jumping in for the second half of the presentation today. So on the agenda today, um, we'll take you through a quick introduction of Rookout for a refresher for those that aren't necessarily familiar with the product. Um, then we'll dive into and spend most of the time in some of the advanced features and how uh, to optimally uh, use and configure Rookout uh, for maximum benefit. Then we'll hand it over to Oded, who will jump in and talk about some new and upcoming features, as well as some tips and tricks. And then we'll save some time at the end for some Q&A. So without further ado, I'll jump right into it. Um, so Rookout, just, just a quick refresher. Rookout is a, a tool platform that allows you to get any data that you want from a running application from any line of code uh, without having to restart or redeploy the application. Um, it uses something that we call non-breaking breakpoints, which allows engineers to uh, really collect snapshots of data on demand to better understand their software um, and really reduce the uh, mean time to repair of, of incidents. If anyone has read or is familiar with the book Accelerate by Nicole Forsgren, there's four main uh, DevOps metrics that are indicative of high performing teams. Mean time to repair is one of those critical ones. Um, just to give you a quick example of where Rookout could fit in and add value to your process. Uh, let's say you've discovered, as a developer, you've discovered a defect in production. And uh, as often happens, you don't have the right log information available within your logs. What will typically happen is a developer will go in to the code, write some additional log lines in the area where they discover the defect, run some quick local tests, push that change to their source code repository, open up a pull request, um, wait for CI processes to run, get approvals if you need to, which is often needed for pushing to production environments wait for those builds, those tests, and the deployments to execute, then interact with the application to try to reproduce the defect, and then go into the logs and see if you have the data. If you don't, it's an iterative process where you have to continue moving along. What we aim to do is really make that process much more simplified, where you can actually go directly to, uh, to code that you have and a running application, set some data collection points, and immediately get the data back that you need. To set up and install Rookout, um, for those of you that haven't done it before, it's, it's actually a very easy process, really as simple as just adding a single import or include statement, um, and then a, a single line of code to the entry point of your application. Um, if you're running Java, it's even, it's even easier. Uh, there's a Java agent. If you've ever set up an APM tool, uh, say like AppDynamics or New Relic or Datadog, uh, it's a simple Java agent that you would attach to your, your running application. You then also need to connect or fetch a, a source code repository. So you can set non-breaking breakpoints, which we'll take a look at in just a little bit. And you can also use something that we call labels or filters to allow Rookout to identify which servers or application instances you're looking to debug. Uh, so since nothing beats a live demo, I will jump over and give you a quick uh, demo of how we set a, a non-breaking breakpoint. What I'm gonna look at here is a typical uh, developer debugging session where a developer comes in, they want to uh, debug their running application and collect, collect data from it. First thing that you would do is connect a, a source code repository. Uh, you can connect to any Git-based source repository or even a local file system. Um, if you're not using one of these Git-based systems, you can actually use our Rookout desktop app or you can download it, clone your repository locally on your laptop, and then use that uh, to connect. And then second, what you'll do is you'll actually input a label that we just mentioned or filter where you can specify a name value pair that can be any name value pair that you choose, or you can choose one of, other, uh, one of Rookout's other out-of-the-box filters such as IP address or process name, for example. 
Um, so I've already deployed an application. Um, and if I switch over to it, uh, you'll notice it's an e-commerce app. So ahead of time, I've went ahead and instrumented this e-commerce application, which is based on uh, mostly Python code uh, with the Rookout SDK. So it's out there, it's running in Google Cloud. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and actually interact with it and show you how we can collect uh, data from that running application. Um, so what I've done is I've selected my, my filter called demo CLR, and I'm gonna click let's go. And what that's gonna do, uh, notice it auto loaded a repository for us uh, based on some uh, configuration that we set up initially. Uh, when Oded comes on, he's gonna take you more in depth into how you can actually auto connect and auto load your repositories. Um, and then I can actually go directly into the code. I can see uh, my source code here. Uh, notice, and you'll note that source code never goes outside of your network. It never comes to Rookout. That stays within your network. Uh, you can come to a specific line of code. I'm gonna choose the forms Python, Python class, and I'm gonna set a breakpoint in the uh, search form class. Uh, so any time a user searches for a new item in our e-commerce store, we'll go and collect data from it. So I'm gonna come uh, back to the e-commerce store and I'm gonna do a quick search for t-shirts, uh, which should get us back some t-shirts and I'll even do one more, uh, I'll search for a hoodie. So we get information back and you'll notice uh, that we get from those two search queries, two messages back in the Rookout message pane. Uh, I can click on any one of those and it will actually bring up uh, information about the underlying state of the application, including all of the local variables that are available as part of the stack. And if I expand uh, the data field, you can actually see that the search query here was t-shirt. It gives us information and metadata about the host and server and process that was running as well as a full stack trace leading up to line 12 of our forms uh, Python file that uh, was where we captured the data. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, that's really just kind of the most basic uh, debugging session and workflow that you might wanna do within Rookout, collecting data and then analyzing that, really allowing you to go in and, um, and collect data from a running application. Typically the, the next set of questions that come up uh, are typically around the Rookout architecture uh, and, and various things of that nature. So I'm going to jump in and talk a, a little bit more about the architecture and a few key areas before jumping back into the demo and diving a little bit deeper. Um, so what happens behind the scenes in, in Rookout? So up to this point, we've seen that we've installed the Rookout SDK within our running application. Um, what happens then is we open up a WebSocket connection that is connecting back to uh, the Rookout SaaS service that we have available. You also saw the Rookout client, which was a browser-based application where you can uh, set these non-breaking breakpoints within your, within your code. Um, and then you also have these data syncs, which are essentially third-party platforms, monitoring or logging systems where you might wanna take the data that you've captured and collected from Rookout and send to things like Elasticsearch, Slack, Splunk, any of these types of, types of systems. There's also um, a on-prem uh, architecture, which Oded is gonna dive into uh, a little bit more in detail for organizations that have uh, sensitive data and wanna keep their data on-prem. Some of the advanced capabilities that we'll jump into next are, are diving a little bit deeper into labels, um, environments, and filters. Uh, we'll look at how you can validate that your servers or, or services are connected to Rookout. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the debug sessions and how those work. And then finally, we'll spend a lot more time diving into breakpoint configuration and showing how you can uh, further refine how and when Rookout collects data and what it does with that data. So, so everyone understands labels and, and, and filters. Um, they're really these, these name value pairs that you can define um, really as you see fit based on the names of your environments or even the names of your service. So as an example, I could deploy a service and define a label called ENV colon production, um, and then be able to filter uh, and tell Rookout, I only want to collect data from my running production services. Uh, alternatively, you could have one for environment staging, environment dev. Um, if you want to get even more specific, you can define multiple filters. So I could define one called ENV staging and service colon service number three, which would tell Rookout, okay, I only want to collect data from service number three in this instance. And that's customizable anywhere you deploy the, the SDK. Um, from there, once you've deployed the SDK, you can come in and you can uh, 
open up the connected servers page or the application instances page. From there, we'll show every single application or service that's connected to Rookout, uh, the, the process name that's running, the, the platform type, and even, even the version. From there, you can also centrally manage breakpoints, disable them from a single place, uh, from, uh, from uh, one, one single click. Secondly, uh, we'll jump into debug sessions. So debug sessions uh, are what we kind of just looked at very briefly, but they allow you to uh, set up three key elements. One is the source code repositories where you'd like to connect uh, and set your, your non-breaking breakpoints. Um, and those can be connected to directly or you can clone a repository and connect to that one. Uh, second are the filters, which we just talked about. So telling Rookout where you want to uh, collect the data from. And third are bookmarks. So you can actually capture uh, the source code repositories that you've connected and any filters that you've selected in a bookmark. That way at any point in time, you can actually just select a bookmark and it will bring up the state of what you were uh, debugging at that particular point in time. Um, lastly, before we jump back into the demo, uh, there's this notion of detailed breakpoint configuration. So if you actually right click on a breakpoint and select edit, as you can see here, it will actually bring up a much more detailed breakpoint configuration panel uh, where you can actually go and further refine how and when Rookout collects data. So with that, we'll jump back over to the demo and we will take a look at uh, further kind of refining the data that we're collecting here. So what I'm gonna do here now that we've uh, captured some data from our application, I'm gonna actually right click on the breakpoint and uh, go and edit that specific breakpoint that we've configured. So you'll notice the breakpoint edit screen comes out and there's a couple interesting things that you may wanna immediately look at or configure. Um, one is the, the, the hit limit uh, where you can actually define how many transactions or how many snapshots Rookout should collect before that breakpoint gets disabled. Um, alternatively, you can do it with a time limit. So you could specify, and let's say I wanna collect data for one hour and then automatically disable the breakpoint. It allows you to collect just the data that you need um, and then turn off Rookout so it's not actually collecting any, any additional data. Um, some other interesting things that a lot of our customers really like for refining what data to collect is something called a conditional. So with, with a conditional, what you can actually do is you can define a variable and uh, only collect data when a specific condition on that variable is met. So as an example, let's, let's uh, close this for a second. And let's say I only wanna collect data when a user searches for the term t-shirt. Maybe I'm having an issue in production uh, for this specific search term. So I can actually right click from the message window and say, okay, I wanna set that as a condition. Then I can actually come right back into it, uh, edit that breakpoint again, and we can see that we have a condition set. So when the data is equal to t-shirt, then collect data. Otherwise, don't collect any data. And these conditions can be simple or they can be advanced where you can combine one or more conditions together. So you'll notice if I come back in, um, I search for uh, t-shirt one more time, and then I'll actually just search for hoodie again. Uh, switching back to Rookout, notice we only collect one additional message, uh, which, which was our, our t-shirt message. The other data, uh, which was the search for hoodie, was actually filtered out. Um, so that's a nice way to, to tell Rookout exactly what you want to collect. Oftentimes, it's nice to have that used in uh, things like uh, maybe a, a session or a specific user ID. You only want to collect data from those users. Um, Lastly, we'll look at targets. So targets are what allow you to actually take the data that Rookout collected and send it to a third party system. So if I actually click on the drop down, you can see some targets that I've configured ahead of time, right? So things like um, Kibana, Elasticsearch, um, uh, uh, Logly, Sumo Logic, Datadog, so on and so forth. Um, Rookout has the ability to send data to any external system that has an API interface available. For this example, what I'm gonna show is I'm gonna show how we can actually take data, send it to Elasticsearch, um, and then view that data within, within Kibana. So I'm just gonna set that, and I'm gonna come back, and I will, since we have a condition on t-shirts, I'm gonna make sure I search for t-shirts since we're only collecting data um, in that case. And we'll come back, and what we can do, a little tip if you guys are using Kibana, if I right click and I look at the status, 
you'll notice that there's this little icon up at the top corner that says view this breakpoint in Kibana. So if I actually go and click on that, it should link me directly uh, to my Kibana dashboard with the information and data that was sent to Kibana already selected. And so you'll notice we got this transaction here, uh, which contained data from my forms Python uh, file. And we can see all of the local variables that were sent, including my search term t-shirt and all of the other variables that are available. Um, and even uh, stack trace information gets, gets sent. So all of that information that you might view in Rookout can be stored and persisted long-term uh, directly within the platform of your choice. In order to further uh, configure and refine uh, the targets that you create, you can specify them from this target screen here. Um, and any new target that you'd like to add, you simply click on the new targets button, choose a target of your choice. Um, anything that is not yet supported, maybe there's a, a custom system that you want to integrate with, you have a custom webhook. So that basically will send a JSON payload, um, essentially a REST API call uh, to any API exposed of your choice. Lastly, before I hand things over to Oded, there's this notion of uh, data redaction as well. So if you have sensitive data in your environments, so personally identifiable information, credit cards, social security numbers, anything that might be sensitive that you might not want developers to see or customers to see, you can actually define data redaction rules, uh, which can be taken the form of blacklist rules, where you can use either the name of a variable or the value uh, of a variable where you can specify regular expressions and we'll actually search the message for those specific regular expression matches. If they match, we'll automatically redact that data from your message. You can also whitelist data alternatively where um, we'll redact all of the data except the variables or fields that you care about seeing. Um, it's important to note here as well that the data redaction fields and the targets section um, are all uh, kept on lockdown under rule-based access control. So you have the ability to define uh, organizations within Rookout and those organizations and the users within those organizations can be granted uh, owner permissions or just member permissions where you can say, okay, this user has the ability to create new targets or data redaction rules. All other users just uh, use those rules and can't define them themselves. Um, so with that, I will pass things over to Oded. Oded, all yours. Thanks, Josh. Uh, that was a great demo. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see the, how, how far the product is and has moved uh, in the past few months. Uh, so following up, on what Josh has shown us, uh, I'd like to share a few tips and tricks that some of our more advanced customers have been using um, and that some of our uh, newer customers haven't uh, found out about yet. So we want to make sure these are uh, front and center. Uh, I will mention basic troubleshooting. Um, Josh touched on our new ability to automatically fetch the uh, source code repository that, that's running on your server. Uh, I will show you where you can find keyboard shortcuts and other uh, neat uh, tips and tricks uh, about Rookout, and we will uh, shortly mention collaboration. Um, if you've ever set a breakpoint on your local debugger, on your local IDE, um, trigger your code and then find out that uh, it's not stopping in the uh, point where you expected, you may have already encountered the challenge of making sure that you're debugging the right environment, the right, the right version of the code. Um, and that's with a local debugger and a locally running application. When things uh, run in the cloud, when things run in a bunch of environments, uh, things uh, get even trickier. And of course, that's what uh, Rookout was built for. Uh, but when things get too tricky, we do try to uh, give you a hint and let you know that something uh, unexpected has happened. Um, and usually, usually our way of doing that is uh, by changing the uh, breakpoint indicator to show you that uh, it's in a warning state, it's in a it's in an error state, or that it's just pending and uh, possibly uh, not connected to the right servers, or maybe uh, SDK has not been installed uh, on that server. 
Um, so you can read more about uh, commonly encountered uh, status indicators in our online documentation. Uh, but you, if you haven't already seen that in action, uh, you should note that every time you set a breakpoint, we give you this kind of heads up on top of it, trying to highlight uh, that it's been applied to one or more uh, servers um, and, and that the, it's up and running and ready to collect data. Um, and one of the things that I think has happened to almost every single uh, Rookout user is that you set this first breakpoint and you see that it's gray or that the circle is hollow. And that, I would say 90% of the times means one of two things. Number one, uh, the SDK is just not installed uh, on the server. That's actually happened to us with a customer today. Uh, so we were quickly able to show him uh, how to set this up. Um, another thing that uh, sometimes happens is uh, where uh, you set the breakpoint and uh, did not adjust the filters accordingly. Uh, just as an example here, I'm setting a breakpoint on a very simple uh, JavaScript application. And now I'm going to intentionally break it. I'm going to edit the debug session as Josh uh, had shown us before. And I'm going to adjust the filters uh, that are based on the labels that uh, Josh has mentioned before. And I'm actually going to filter and only uh, try to fetch data from Python based application. Um, so when that happens, Rookout automatically understands that, you know what, this is a JavaScript file. I'm not going to be able to fetch data for you from a Python application. So our way of showing that is uh, uh, turning the breakpoint into a hollow circle and giving you uh, this uh, pending status indicator with some information and the common pitfalls and workarounds that should help you uh, get up and running to, to resolve it. Uh, now, Josh has also mentioned the uh, application instances page or the connectivity uh, page. Um, and that page is very useful when you try to understand why you're not fetching uh, data. Really, nine, nine out of 10 uh, support calls for uh, a pending breakpoint end up uh, with us and the customer looking here, understanding that, you know what, uh, this breakpoint uh, cannot be applied here. This is a Python app, uh, and once we change the, the filters, we are able to uh, fetch data again. Uh, so if you haven't already, uh, make sure to check this page, see uh, which applications uh, Rookout is deployed on, um, make sure that the configuration is what you expected it to be, and then get back to your debugging session, uh, set it back to uh, the wanted application servers, uh, and you should be able to see the breakpoint turning uh, purple again. Uh, another point that uh, Josh has touched on, and maybe if, if you know, uh, wrong filters are the number one uh, problem uh, frustrating some of our customers. The number two problem is, uh, making sure that you are on the right version of the code. Uh, more often than not, if, if you're working with a, an automated build and deploy system, a CI CD system, or with a very complex uh, microservices application or cloud native application, you will have multiple versions of your code, uh, each of them running on uh, a subset of servers. And uh, when you're, for example, uh, looking at master, setting a breakpoint on master, but trying to fetch data uh, from yesterday's code or from last week's code, it is sometimes uh, hard or impossible for, for Rookout to, to fetch data from these uh, servers. Um, and usually what will happen is, again, we will uh, uh, go to the application instances page, uh, look at the version that's deployed there, uh, understand that it's the wrong version, uh, adjust the filters, and then the, the breakpoint will turn purple again. Uh, one way to uh, save all of that hassle and to avoid confusion is to use uh, one of our latest features, which is the ability to automatically fetch uh, repositories and, and, and subversions. Um, and to implement that, you just pass to uh, additional environment variables when setting up Rookout. One of them will give us the 
uh, URL to the uh, repository, to the remote repository. And one of them will be the hash uh, of the right revision or uh, commit for, for Git-based applications. And once that's in place, uh, as Josh has uh, earlier sh uh, shown us, uh, when I uh, adjust uh, the filter uh, to select a Python application, the, the right uh, repository and the right version is automatically fetched for me. You can think about it as you're looking at the production server and rather than manually uh, checking what version of the code is running on it and manually fetching it from Git, uh, it would be so much easier and more fun if Ruka just fetched it uh, automatically for you. And, and that's basically what we're doing here. We're looking at the running server, we're looking at the link for the repository and the revision, and we're automatically fetching the repository for you. And once that's in place, you can just set a breakpoint and uh, be sure uh, that it will uh, uh, fetch data for you as expected. So really um, a feature that we are very proud of and uh, has made uh, installations and uh, overall Rookout usage much easier for, for many of our clients. Uh, another beloved feature that uh, I sometimes joke and think of it as an Easter egg, although it's uh, hiding in plain sight. It's just that Rookout has a bunch of keyboard shortcuts uh, that we try to uh, make them as natural uh, as your favorite uh, IDE or for that matter, any other tool. So Control Shift F or Command Shift F will uh, search through the open uh, source code repositories uh, in the sources tab. So if you're looking for a specific file, uh, it will be much easier to find it for, uh, for your next uh, debugging session. Um, control and square brackets will uh, switch through tabs just as you would through uh, the tabs of, of a local uh, IDE. Um, and if you haven't uh, found uh, our uh, customer success page already, uh, you can find more of these uh, tips and tricks uh, in the rookout.com uh, customer success page. Uh, uh, you can visit it in your free time, uh, find the tips and tricks page, and uh, we, we try to keep this fresh with new, uh, uh, again, uh, fun Easter eggs that, that we hope uh, will be less secret uh, moving forward. And last but not least, uh, this is actually something that uh, we like to use internally uh, and we hope that more customers will benefit from as well. Uh, one of the things I do when debugging in a team uh, very often is, you know what, I, I was able to reproduce the bug, I was able to see the snapshot, I don't know what's wrong here or I don't know what to do next. And the next thing I wanna do is either uh, copy this snapshot and show it to a friend or you know, um, if, if, if at all possible, have that friend sit next to me and uh, look at the screen and, and point me at the bug. The nearest thing uh, I can do uh, when uh, debugging remote applications is to basically share this information. Workout lets you uh, copy uh, a URL, a link that will take another developer uh, to Rookout, to the given uh, environment and code repository, and to the, the full debug message that uh, Josh has shown us uh, earlier on. And uh, uh, then the developer can set up another breakpoint, uh, understand uh, which function is calling this function or which service is uh, uh, invoking this service, uh, and take me uh, another step down the rabbit hole uh, of debugging. It's really quite straightforward. I'm actually going to demo uh, our ability to do the same with, uh, with a Slack application. So by uh, clicking, um, uh, by choosing the, the relevant uh, Slack channel, I'm going to uh, share this uh, information here. And If I go to the monitoring channel in my Slack application, I can see uh, that I've shared uh, data here and another developer can just uh, click on this link, log into Rookout, have uh, the debug chain already configured with the relevant filters and the relevant repository uh, and the debug message uh, shown 
so you can continue the debugging session. So those were some tips and tricks for advanced uh, lookout usage. We're going to touch a little bit on uh, some of the recent features, some of those we've already mentioned. Uh, we'll say a few words about uh, stuff that we are already working on and are coming up next as well. So some of the new features released over the past couple of months. Um, .NET was actually released earlier this year. Uh, but over the past couple of months, we've worked with a couple of customers uh, who have uh, put us uh, to the test, who have deployed our .NET SDK in their uh, high-scale uh, live production environment and have helped us uh, take out all of the uh, quirks that uh, uh, may have uh, concerned uh, them uh, beforehand. So we are happy to say that uh, our .NET SDK is production ready. Uh, some of the customers we work with uh, do not use Git-based uh, source code, source control tools. Uh, uh, some of them use Spellforce, so we've uh, adjusted our desktop application, the Rooka desktop app, uh, to uh, integrate uh, with Spellforce, so we can uh, have the same seamless experience of automatically fetching and, and adjusting to the, uh, the right uh, revision uh, when using Spellforce. Um, and uh, while we are at it, we've also uh, added support for any uh, Git provider. Um, those of you who have seen uh, Git, uh, who have seen Rookout a year ago, know that we had an integration with uh, cloud-based uh, GitHub and Bitbucket and GitLab. Um, right now, uh, the, the application should work with any Git-based provider, uh, either the ones I mentioned or uh, other ones. Uh, and it should work with both uh, local enterprise versions of these Git providers, uh, or as well with uh, cloud-based providers. And uh, last but not least, and maybe uh, the biggest feature we have released uh, recently, is the ability to keep uh, all of the debugging data or, or log lines or metrics uh, on the premises. So uh, when Josh has shown us the architecture of how Rookout works earlier on, he has shown us the uh, SaaS version where uh, data goes out to the Rookout service uh, and then goes back in uh, to the browser, to the client. Uh, with our more uh, data sensitive customers, with our bigger enterprise customers, uh, and really in today's economy, that's uh, almost everyone in the market, uh, data, is very precious and, and uh, showing and proving that you are not getting uh, sensitive data out uh, is a big part uh, of your business in all the likelihood. And to adjust that, we, we are uh, providing a new uh, data on-prem capability. We have a local uh, ETL agent uh, along with a local data store. And that allows you to keep uh, all of the debug messages, the log lines, the metrics that, that you collect with Rookout within your network, uh, but uh, they still reach the browser. So that means you still get the um, friendly IDE-like user experience uh, within your browser, even though it does not come from the World Wide Web. It uh, just arrives from within your organization. Um, now, just has shown us that uh, setting up Rookout, the, the SDK is quite straightforward. This uh, deployment sometimes is a bit trickier. You need to install another couple of agents. Uh, so this may require some assistance from our uh, team. So uh, if, if you are interested in trying this out, be sure to, to reach out and let us know. So those were the new features. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with some of the items we are working on in the coming couple of months, and then we're going to leave some time for questions. One of the features we started working on based on conversations with uh, some of our customers is uh, basically us trying to quantify uh, how uh, helpful Rookout has been for you, how active you and your team have been uh, when using Rookout. 
uh, either measuring uh, how many debug sessions you've had, how many breakpoints you set, uh, how many uh, debug messages you've collected as a way of uh, showing off that you are the bravest developer in the bunch because you debug in production on a daily basis. Um, for some of our customers, this directly uh, um, relates to uh, how much time or effort or risk uh, Rookout has saved you. We've had customers mention that uh, a five minute debugging with Rookout where you immediately get the data can save you up to an hour or two of, of debugging or waiting for a new log line to be added uh, or waiting for a local uh, dev or staging environment to become available. And if that's the case, we're trying to uh, really uh, help you see uh, how many hours or how many releases uh, Rookout was able to help you save. Um, and maybe most importantly, since uh, part of the Rookout configuration is which environment you are debugging or which application you are debugging, we're also trying to map uh, basically which environments uh, require a lot of production debugging or a lot of debugging and staging or a lot of debugging in general. So if you want to get a heat map of which a part of your application may need uh, some love and care in terms of adding more log lines or maybe uh, uh, a bug hunt or uh, some more uh, unit tests, uh, this could give you a, a hint at uh, where to focus your R&D efforts on. And one thing we would love to hear from you is uh, how do you uh, measure the effectiveness of your debugging? What other graphs you would like to see here? And what uh, would be the multiplier uh, for your team when uh, using Rookout? Another feature that tries to wrap uh, some of the things that Josh has shown you and some of the things that I have shown you, as we've uh, repeated and mentioned, uh, Setting up Rookout on a lot of uh, complex environment is sometimes tricky. And we are trying to take all of the knowledge that we got from our customers about what matters to you when you start debugging. How do you want to filter your environment? How do you want to set up the Rookout labels? And try to put it all in one place where you can uh, select an environment, uh, filter by labels, uh, choose the right repository and the right version of the code and uh, in the same context, get the list of servers that you are fetching data from um, and immediately understand uh, what's missing or what's misconfigured before you start a debug session, rather than having the iterative uh, flow of uh, starting a debug session, getting a pending breakpoint, uh, reconfiguring, and so on and so forth. And uh, building up on the collaboration feature that uh, we demoed a few minutes ago, uh, we've decided to uh, enhance our collaboration abilities. Uh, we're considering adding uh, more integration points. So currently we have uh, an integration with Jira and with Slack, but uh, we'd love to hear uh, which collaboration tools your team is using so we can maybe integrate into those as well. Uh, and uh, into the tools that we do integrate with, uh, maybe provide a stronger uh, embedded uh, integration, not just providing a link to the debug session, but really uh, posting the, the debug information in a helpful way that would look and feel closer to what uh, Josh has shown us when he gave us the demo where the uh, data looks uh, just like you would expect to see it in Kibana. Uh, I would love for this to be, you know, I open a bug, uh, uh, I give all of the information and the developer the bug is assigned to has all he needs to either fix it on his own or go into a deeper debugging session to, to get to the root cause. And with that, uh, we would love to hear if any of you have uh, any questions, uh, Josh and I can answer some of them. Okay, well, let's actually uh, start with Josh for the first question, um, which is, can I use Rookout to debug a local application? Josh, you're muted. There we go. Thanks. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Rookout really works across any environment where your application is deployed. It can be cloud-based like AWS or Azure. 
um, can be an on-prem uh, application, can even just be something that you're running locally, just a local application that you spin up. Docker or Java doesn't really matter. Um, there is a, a SaaS-based component to Rookout, so you will need an internet connection to connect to the Rookout service, but otherwise um, there's no, uh, no restrictions as to where the application is running. Cool. Um, okay, so a question for Oded. Does Rookout also let you edit the code? A uh, very good question and uh, really one of the most popular ones because uh, Rookout does look like an IDE by design and really that's one of the things that uh, as a developer I, I want to see. That's where I feel at home. Uh, however, when I mention this to my DevOps team, they are not happy uh, with something that can uh, edit the code uh, while going over uh, the CICD processes that, that we have in place. You do not want to let developers edit the code uh, without uh, making sure that the, the build cycle went through, the test cycle went through, uh, maybe your company has uh, uh, compliance issues, maybe your company has uh, uh, like uh, uh, ISO processes in place. So uh, by design, we do not let developers edit the code in the IDE, although really it, it itches my fingers whenever I uh, do a demo to uh, just start typing and change the code. Uh, we may go there in the future, but at the moment uh, it's a feature that uh, keeps our uh, enterprise customers satisfied. Cool. Okay, so uh, we'll do one more question each. Um, another one for Josh, what is the performance overhead of Rookout? That's definitely one that we get uh, in, in most of our conversations that we have with customers. Um, so the performance overhead of Rookout is extremely minimal. Um, I like to compare it to, uh, to APM tools because a lot of folks are familiar and are running APM tools today uh, in their environments. So if you, if you think of APM tools, they're constantly out there collecting data, uh, putting together traces, collecting exception information, um, and capturing all of that so you can see the current state of your application at any point in time. Um, Rookout is a little bit different in that by default, we're not actually doing anything. We're not collecting data. When you install uh, the Rookout SDK in your application and you start your application up, what Rookout does is it makes a WebSocket connection uh, out to the Rookout SaaS service, and then it just waits for instructions or commands, uh, essentially for you to set one of those non-breaking breakpoints to collect data. Um, so at that point, the overhead is, is, is really negligible. Um, once you start setting these non-breaking breakpoints that you saw, um, the overhead is, is about uh, similar or about the same to as if you had written a log line on that specific line of code. Um, so, so still it's very minimal um, and similar to the overhead you would get if you were just doing doing the logging on your own. Okay. Um, and last question for Oded. Does Rookout let you step into a function? Uh, again, uh, very popular questions because we do try to give uh, the look and feel of an IDE and specifically that of a debugger. Uh, at the moment, Rookout does not let you step into a function. Um, since we, the first use case we address with uh, many of our high scale customers is uh, production debugging, we, we cannot afford to stop anything. Uh, we uh, pause for the minimal amount of time uh, possible, fetch the data, uh, pipe it over to, to the relevant uh, logging tool, uh, and let the application resume. Um, we may add uh, something that looks and feels like uh, stepping in, in in the future, but at the moment we're trying to keep things uh, up and running. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us and thank you Adet and Josh um, for your wise words and helpful tips and tricks. Um, and uh, we'll see you at the second round. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone, take care.